And I want to talk about um, Joe Rogan, who you've covered, who I think is is pretty amazing. He's very powerful. He's definitely a threat. He scares mainstream media. And you here's an article that you wrote about him for the New York Post. No big deal. Just the Post. Uh, the only reason the media tries to cancel Joe Rogan is because he terrifies them. And in, to your point before, like if he factually gets something wrong, sure, he'll apologize. But he is not weak and he doesn't apologize for having an opinion. Um, mm. And here is right. And these are the short list of complaints. These are the main reasons you pointed out why he's such a threat. He speaks to people on the fringe like Alex Jones. Uh, he will give, quote, problematic voices like Abigail Schreier, a critic of the trans agenda, a platform. He is willing to question the government's COVID-19 dog-eared rule book. He's willing to curse out cancel culture. And he's a big fan uh, of free speech. And I think, you know, people at, at times were worried, oh, like, are they trying to... Th were they trying to censor him? Oh, did they get him to Spotify so they could control him a little bit easier? Um, I mean, I want to hear your thoughts on, like, you know, I guess the, the Joe Rogan effect. I mean, he's such a good example of somebody who kind of was like an everyman and then worked really hard, built this huge platform. And now it's like, oh, well, now we don't like what he says all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think Spotify signed him because the, just, it's just money. He's wildly successful. He's got a huge audience, and they saw that, and that's perfectly fine. But I think what they didn't realize is that there'd be a kind of a culture war that comes with his his success and his fame. And uh, the people who work for the company don't like the fact that he says certain things or, or shares certain opinions. So it's it's really tricky. Um, so what happens next? I don't know. You know, I think he um, put himself at risk by joining this company because he just should have known what the culture is at the time. He was fabulously wealthy, I'm sure, beforehand. He's much more now. But uh, let's see if he sticks to his guns. And it sounds like the Spotify CEO has his back. But, you know, you don't know where the culture is going. Um, after the George Floyd uh, protests, you know, they were, you know, taking down content left and right and warning labels. So if there's another event in our lives there where we get extra sensitive again, then, you know, maybe he's gone. We'll, we'll have to see. But, uh, you know, talking to everyone is fascinating to me. I think it's what he should do. You know, at the end of the day, he's a comedian. Mm -hmm. He's not a guy running for office. Why do we Why do we even care? You know, we're, we're allowed to tell jokes and say crazy things. I grew up on Howard Stern. He said the craziest things in the world. It was just ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, I didn't, you know, I didn't go vote based on what he said. I, 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 he made me laugh. He made me think. He kind of made me uncomfortable at times. But that's what comedians do. But why we're just suddenly holding them to a different standard. And, you know, and I think we can all laugh at jokes that are uncomfortable, maybe even mean. I mean, it, what, what have we been laughing at for the last 50 years? People getting pies thrown in their face. People's, you know, getting hit in the groin by a ball on, on Funniest Home Videos. You know, th there is a, a darkness to laughter sometimes. And it's kind of human nature. I don't know if we can chase that away. Absolutely. And 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 haters of of Joe Rogan will say, oh, how 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 dare we listen to him? He is just a comedian. And it's like, well, why do you even need to say that? It's obvious that he's a comedian. And I think that just speaks to their their fear of him, like the influence and the impact that he has. Yeah. My kid's 12. He, he watches YouTube and thinks every crazy story he sees on there is true. But one day he will be an adult. He'll have be able to decide, you know, where are the sources that I trust? And I'm trying to teach him that now with limited success. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we are we are free. We're, we're free to kind of read fringe sites or mainstream sites. And uh, that's that's the kind of the cost of freedom in a way. You know, sometimes art will provoke people in negative ways. But do we censor art? Do we shut it down? Do we have sort of a quota system? I mean, it's just it's free. It's it's our culture. And I, I just I think we're heading to a place where we maybe just don't trust people enough.